We're going to Germany and our mayor is taking us there. <laughs> mayor Ryan Sorensen, I'll just talk, I don't know what name I'll use today. I use mayor, I use Ryan, oh, I, whatever. <laughs> it's his idea, he said, Marilyn, I can do schnitzel and spätzel, okay. May arrived and we're doing schnitzel, which is chicken, and spätzel, which is noodles. And also he came up with the idea of having little bratwurst pieces with curry sauce. Yep. And for dessert, he he um, bought some cookies. It's just the cookies in front of you, yeah. <laughs> and he worked all night. She said no to the, 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 the Black Forest cake, so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we made a lot of schnitzel yesterday. We started at 1.30 and we got home about 6.30. Six, yeah. Okay, all right. What would you like to say, Mayor? Well, uh, I'll say some opening introductions. Uh, so sit back. Um, <laughs> no, first, first off, I want to say thank you, everyone, for, for being here today and being involved in uh, Uptown Social. Um, it's really great that we have uh, the, these services here just for folks to get involved in their community. And um, the, the point of why, why Marilyn cornered me and said why we should do Germany, I said, I want this to be educational as well. Obviously, a lot of folks know Sheboygan has a lot of German heritage as well. But this year specifically, Sheboygan is celebrating our 55-year anniversary with being sister cities uh, with Esslingen, Germany, um, in Germany. So, uh, um, so I, wanted, I wanted folks to really kind of understand what role our sister cities play and the importance of it today. And I think just with what's all going on in the world today, it's, it's very important that we recognize that no matter where we live in the world, in our neck of the woods, we should do what we can uh, to promote peace and cooperation. So Sheboygan has two sister cities, Essling and Germany. We've been sister cities for 55 years this year. And then in Tsubami, Japan, which last year was our 25th year anniversary, this year is our 26th year. Um, so we're, we're proud to have um, Esslingen as one of our sister cities here. So today we're gonna celebrate our sister city partnership by making some German food. Um, so. Um, just because I'm the mayor doesn't mean I'm a great chef, but my, my, he is, he is. my, um, my, my family ancestry is German. So these are some recipes that have been passed down, uh, through, through my family's generations, um, as well. So that's all I have to say right now. Um, we'll keep this very entertaining for everybody. So no sleeping back there. Um, we, we got some great food. I love German food. Um, it's just, it's good, it's hearty. There's the recipes in front of you. Um, just a quick overview of, of, of what they are. But has anyone ever been to Germany before? Ooh, All right, for those that haven't, if, if this is not good, then, you know, then I have nothing to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marilyn, okay. take it away. All what right. are we starting with first? Let's start with making the batter for the schnitzel. No, no. The schnitzel, the, the spätzel. The spätzel. So, the, uh, so we'll make some batter, we'll let it rest, we'll go over to the chicken, and then we will do the noodles at the end. So, we need a couple of eggs. In fact, what, is, what does your recipe say about the spätzle? Oh, and we got... Ah. Oh. And, we've, and we've got these brown eggs that I don't like. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He, I didn't know that. He didn't know that. The whole class knew that they're rubber, but oh. the mayor did not know that. <laughs> but I need the rubber eggs back. I didn't know she was going to do that. <laughs> I had a mini heart attack. Oh. When you find the other rubber egg, I'll take it back. Where, well, we did okay. find the other rubber egg. Last, the last cooking class... The, the, the volunteers knew, but the class did not know. Oh. So next. Can, all right, I'll. Sp this is, is for the. Okay. Um, I'll let you whip it up. All right. So we need. All right, we're whipping up the eggs. And then you need some water. I think a cup of water, right? Cup of water, okay. Or so. Whoops. This is warm. We definitely do not want warm. We will get quick glue. Milk or water. Yeah. 
So, and you know, when you make noodles, it is flour, eggs, liquid, and some salt. And remember when we did the pasta class, that was the same thing, flour, eggs, liquid, and we made it into linguine, and we made it into lasagna noodles. It's just the same sort of idea, but we're going to boil it in some water. Whoops. We gotta put the flour in first. Okay. Is this for this? That's for that. All right. And a little bit of nutmeg. The little nutmegs. It beats the heck out of taking your fingernails on the rasper of a cheese grater. You want to put the water in? Yep. Excuse me. Yes. Your mic does not work for the crowd. It it's not for the crowd. for the TV. Yeah. So you have to speak loud. Okay, I'll talk. Can you hear me in the back? All right, I'll keep talking this loud. And the people in the front, put your hands over your ears. All right, okay. And if I tend to fade, just say louder, Marilyn. <clears throat> now, if I have put in too much liquid, we're up that creek. It's all getting clogged in here. How about this? Just a spoon. There we go. There you go. Well, you know when it comes to cooking, if you've made an error, it's all too much glue in the whisk, then we clean out the whisk. That's the part of cooking. It's called winging it. Yeah, that's real cooking. I do that cooking. every day. <laughs> that no, looks good. Go. And we don't have to worry about mixing it too much. We need the egg, water, and flour mixed enough so it is smooth. Kind of thick, but smooth. Can we see that I don't think we can. You can look. I'll do, like, I'll do the Vanna White kind of All thing. Right. <laughs> Little. Good. And it tends to be lumpy. It's so, a little lumpy. So keep on going, keep on going. Yesterday we did like a big five gallon bowl well, and I, it was, oh my gosh, it was a workout. And he, he she did She put it. me to work, like. <laughs> still lumpy. It's still lumpy. It's, go, it's going though, it's going. But that gives you an idea how much you are going to have to stir or whisk it or put it in your mixer. Yeah, why don't we put it in our mixer, Marilyn? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm the mixer. Um, and the noodles, spitzel, we're making fresh, you'll get them. But of course, at the grocery store, they also have Spetzel. Stuff you can throw in the microwave, right? I, I don't know. I think you boil that. I think we yeah. boil this, right. It looks for all the world like egg noodles, yep. which it is. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. Perfect. All right. So then we're going to let that sit for about 30-ish minutes. It'll be less than that today. But yeah. Yeah. All right. What are we doing next, Marilyn? All right. Let's go to the chicky. We need to the chicken breast in a plastic bag with a little bit of water so it doesn't stick and then we can pound it with this or, or use a mallet this is this is where we get out our aggression yeah, yeah. so you just got to kind of flatten the ch oh did you do this already well we want to do oh, it we more it. Okay. we want a super thin one today for the demo yep. so it cooks quickly so we're just thinning out the meat even if it shreds <laughs> what these seniors in the audience, no, yeah, not. no. <laughs> and of course you can use anything you want at home. Your rolling pin, a hammer, except use the side of it, because just the head of it would be too. Yeah, as thin as can be, even if it starts to shred. How's that look? A little more, yep. pretty good? For the demo, yes. Cool, there we go. Yep. <laughs> okay, now. Okay. An egg. Okay, this is for the, the schnitzel now. Yep. So we're making the egg wash. Do I gotta stir this? Yep. 
we first we'll flour the chicken to make it dry. Then we dip it in the egg to make it wet and gluey. This is what a cracked egg looks like. <laughs> just, just don't want to forget that out. Yeah. Right? And then we, after the flour to make it dry, the egg to make it wet, then it goes into the crumbs. Panko bread crumbs are super duper crispy. That's not a way to use up your leftover bread, but they are super duper crispy. Do we want to do this one? Yeah. Well, okay. let's do the. Uh, let's get some oil in there. Yep. And then. Uh, All right. So then, a little bit of oil, about a half an inch in the frying pan. Half an inch, quarter inch. Just Enough. Kinda. And we're doing only one in front of you. Mm -hmm. I think it's the other one. Okay, no, he was right. I was wrong again. Okay, so we'll heat that up. I need a little more. Yep, schnitz and schnitz, schnitzel. You can do pork, schnitzel, wiener, schnitzel, veal, schnitzel. Pork? Oh, uh, the, the thin pork. Um, probably, I don't think you'd want the lean uh, tenderloin. Some uh, the piece, like a boneless pork chop. A boneless pork chop and then pound the crap out of it. Right. We're doing chicken today because it's cheaper. So. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna use my hands. And we were both covered in flour yesterday. So chicken pounded first flour. Egg. And then put it in the egg wash. To make it sticky. And then and the then, bread crumbs. Yep. And you can see it's kind of coming apart here. But that's the way I like it. And if one person is doing it, your fingers are very, very fat at the end. Throw it in there. And I promise to wash my hands carefully in the kitchen so all of this chicken stuff is off of my hands. Oof. I'm, and I'm, I'm sure spilling the over here, but you can't see it, so. <laughs> and of course, you could use milk or something um, in here instead of the egg, but the egg is super nice and sticky. When I do chicken parmigiana at home, I do flour, mayonnaise, and flavored panko crumbs. And that mayonnaise works nicely also. Okay, I'm leaving with this and I will return with clean hands. All right, thanks folks for coming. <laughs> All right, we're back from our commercial break. Yeah. All right. So once once you put your, your meat in the frying pan, you, you're gonna want it, you're gonna wait about anywhere between three to five minutes. You're gonna want one side golden brown. You'll, you'll see it kind of start coming up, but golden brown is kind of the color you want. A really key trick is you don't wanna keep flipping it too many times. Ideally, you just wanna frying it on one side, get that side done, and then after it's golden brown on the bottom, then flip it onto the other side until it's done. So. This one might take a little longer because it just we just put it in, so we'll, we'll get, give it a minute. But in the meantime, we should start our curry verse sauce. Yes. While we do that, so I know we're kind of popping around all over the place, so pay attention. We started the spetzel sauce. We're frying the schnitzel right now. I feel like where are we? What's one? Okay, back one. We're gonna heat up a frying pan here, just kind of low. So curry verse. This is kind of um. This is a, a German street food. It's very popular if you go to Berlin, if you've ever been to Berlin before. I always kind of say this is the, the equivalent to like the New York hot dog stand. You know, in New York, there's hot dog stands all over the place. Curryverse is very similar to that. There's, it's kind of the street grab and go food. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's traditionally served um, alongside uh, crispy French fries with mayo. 
So yeah. um, it's a weird combination, but it's so darn good. And, and once you do it, you what, don't go back. What, what in Canada they serve French fries with? That's um, uh, poutine, yes, with no, gravy. Yeah, right. But no, French fries do not come with ketchup in, in, it's in great, Canada. Yeah. They come with something else. Yeah, gravy. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's gravy. I know, no, you're Clap talking. if you agree with the mayor. No, you're talking about... Yeah, no, right. <laughs> you're talking about poutine. I'm yeah. talking about French fries. Oh, we're talking about different things. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. right. Okay. I used to work at a camp in northern Wisconsin, at a Jewish camp when I was in high school, and I knew nothing about kosher, but I learned a lot that summer. And there were a number of kids from Canada, and we served not ketchup. Vinegar. Ooh. Yes. Yep. Vinegar. Yep. Malt vinegar. Yep. That's right. Yep. Right. Actually, malt vinegar is good. That is yep. good. I yeah. agree. I agree. Okay. So you saw the mayor with his ketchup. So we're we're putting it in a, a pan. Um, so you just put a ton of ketchup in there. This is th I, this is how I ate in college: just ketchup and pizza and nothing good. Then just put some spices in that that you prefer. So this is this is garlic. I like to put a little garlic in there. Um, a lot of garlic, if you're me, but no, we're just a little. Um, and then obviously a little bit of curry um, for the for the blend. I'll get some tasting spoons for you. Perfect. And I need a stirring spoon. Okay. Thank. Oh, thank you. Then just kind of stir it up. Yes. You can do onion or garlic pot, yeah. Or both, you could you pepper, paprika. Anything you want, yeah. Horseradish, uh, Worcestershire sauce too. Uh, sometimes I do that. Usually it's one of these things, whatever you got in the kitchen that you're trying to use up, just throw in there. So the we're gonna let that- last teaspoon of horseradish that's been sitting there for six months. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for about a minute more, and then we're gonna add some beef beef broth once that's a little warmer. I want to make sure I have that. How's the schnitzel looking, Marilyn? Well, let's see. No, it, it's it's a little longer. It's still pale, and of course, the first side always takes the longest. Yep. Just like a hamburger or a pork chop or a steak. What else were we going to tell you about German food? In, with the uh, bratwurst that's heating in the oven, because we cooked those yesterday with some onion, and then we put it in a pan with some Bavarian-style sauerkraut. So it'll be tasty little chunks of bratwurst with the curry sauce. This needs a little more ketchup. I'm just gonna use this on. Yeah, right, correct. And they, the Germans don't use Miesfeld's bratwurst either, but... No. <laughs> Okay, can you see this? Ooh. Ooh. Question in the back? Oh. You grill them on a grill? Well, we did them in a we, frying we pan. We did them in a frying pan, yes. You see, you just prepare the brats like normal brats. Yeah. With beer and onions. We didn't use beer this time. But we're going to have beer, if you want it. Now, before you think, well, great, you're only gonna get half of one of these. <laughs> Marilyn didn't let me get a keg, so. Yeah. Well, I think we would have to have had license. Yeah, well, you know, Sheboygan mayors really shouldn't, you know. No. <laughs> I think I'll get a plate on which to put this rather than just running yeah. the grease on the floor. Uh, what does it say on the, the, the recipe That's for how much here. beef this broth? Be perfect for the. I think a teaspoon, right? Cooked yep. Tablespoons or teaspoons? This is the this is where I I don't want to screw it up. You, you, you can also just eye it. Yeah, no. I'm gonna put a little more. Just to give it that extra little, you know, flavor. So it doesn't taste too much like ketchup. 
Next month in June, June, Natasha Tory, who is our city what? What's her city title? judge? City judge elected by us, Natasha Tory, is going to do the cooking class on is it the 15 or the 17 of June? 17, the last that Friday, that Friday in June the 17th, and she's going to do soul food in honor of Juneteenth. And then in July, our Emily and her husband, and June will be here, and in July will be here also, are going to do Peru. So should, they promise they'll do something besides the raw fish. Now we're waiting for the water to boil. <laughs> and what is the saying? A cook, no, a watch pot is there never salt boils. In there? Yes. Oh, okay. A handful. Okay, there's, so the, the water that is boiling is salt. We, I mean, there's, there's some salt in the water. My mom always said, if you're making noodles or, you know, when you're, when you're making water, if the water doesn't taste like the ocean, then you're not doing it right. That's right. So. Yeah, and a kettle is usually a small handful of salt. Yep. Yeah, not a teaspoon. I tried the schnitzel, so it's, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> yep. Okay, water boil, water boil. Um, All right, so the, we let this simmer, so this, this should be good. And so usually, so this is, if, if, when you come up for the curry verse, you can just take a, a, you don't put a whole lot on it unless you really, really, really like curry flavor. Um, and I didn't make it too spicy, but it's supposed to be like a savory, spicy kind of thing. So just you, when you get your part of your brat, just take a scoop, put it on top. If you want to add a little more curry, usually they sprinkle some curry on top of it as well. So that's And I, th that's I think, Mir, we're, instead of this little spoon, Well, yeah, we'll do a different one. That, that's just my stirring yeah, spoon. Yeah, because this one's the only one long enough, yeah. right? Oh, it's starting to bubble. Oh, I think maybe while we're waiting for that, we could turn on the Milwaukee polka. Okay, now it's time for the entertainment portion of this evening. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, clap along, everyone. Hang on. We should go in front. Okay, yeah, let's yeah, go in front. Go in front. Great. Here we go. <laughs> and, and then, oh, oh, I don't know this and then, part. Of course, I get I get dizzy. Yeah. And of course, when you when you're dancing with somebody, you put your hand on their muscle back there, not their shoulder, but their muscle, then you can feel what they're doing. And of course, you look at your partner the whole time. <laughs> Good. Well, thanks, everyone. <laughs> But he made me dizzy. Is the water done boiling or? Yes. Now you can put, well, I'll let the mayor explain. Oh, okay. The, so the water is boiling now. All right. So now we got, what do, what do we call this? It's not necessarily a grater. It's a spetzel maker. A spetzel maker. Um, but if you don't if, if you don't have a handy dandy spetzel maker around your house, you can also just use um, like like a like a sieve or you know a drainer, a colander, colander, whatever you have, uh, just uh, anything with holes in it, basically. Jim, my daughter uses the Ziploc bag with the hole cut in the corner. Yep, oh, that works too. So she's very patient. So this is what we have today. So all we do is set it above uh, the the boiling pot and your batter that's been sitting, then you just drop it in. You just kind of sit it on top and let it rain in. Do we have a closest thing a, is a this. rubber rubber scraper? Rubber scraper. Terry will get a rubber scraper so we get every bit of batter. And then two or three minutes and it's done. I saw one recipe that said ten to fifteen. Holy moly! No. Oh, they look beautiful Thank already. Thank you. And when you're at home alone, you do not have a second person to hold on to this. Yeah, it's difficult doing this by yourself. And sometimes yeah. it falls in the pot, you just pick it out and keep going. Well, you know, that's what cooking is. 
Okay, bring, bring the, that back so I can put this into it. There we go. Then. Ooh, I can't show you this part. No, you but. can't. But you give it literally a minute or two. I'll get the bowl of cold water. Yes, perfect. And I'll turn this down. So, but what it does, it, it kind of just creates these noodle-like things. Thank <laughs> And it literally, it's, it's done. So, I'm just going to take it off the heat because you don't want to overcook it. We forgot a portion. So what we're what you're supposed to do is kind of rinse it. You're supposed to put it in um in a cold cold water, drain it with cold water. Marilyn's getting it. Yeah. Okay, a bowl of cold water. And that rinses off the starch. Otherwise it would be So you don't follow the Italians with never rinse, you follow the German always rinse. And even, even if you do make spaghetti for a large crowd, like we did at some church suppers, of course, when the spaghetti is rinsed, the sauce does not adhere as well. That is true. Do you got a colander? But you have to be able to get the spaghetti out of the pot onto somebody's plate. Colander, colander. yes. Well, another bowl is what you need. Yeah. Connor and Okay, can you do this? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to just No, I was going you could scoop it out. Oh. And now we're just getting it out of the water. That's all. Well, however you want to do it. It works easier when you dump it through a colander. Yes. Is it still warm? Lukewarm. And then you can pour hot brown butter on it. Everything is off, 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 all right. All right. Okay, that, that's good. Cool. I'll walk around with this. So this is what the oh, spetzel thank looks you, like. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Once it's done. And then you put parsley on it, or you can put cheese, or Marilyn said pesto, butter. I'll, I'll come around. We'll come around on that side. Spetzela. I, I just use a colander at home. Yeah. It, it just kind of you, you you don't want you want to make sure it has good size holes though in the colander. You want them kind of bigger than smaller. Yeah. If it's smaller, then it's it just doesn't work. Thanks. Voila! Woo! It looks like man. And just potatoes. like that, we have enough serving for forty people. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner is served.